I think um, we, well, we have a quorum, and it's after 4 o'clock. It looks like it's about 4.02. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the October 15th. Uh, 2019 uh, meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Also, my father's birthday. <laughs> Rest in peace. Um, that um, let's see. This meeting is being audio and video recorded. And yes, I, I double checked that. Um, and we always start each meeting with a brief uh, promotion of the Pace Car Program. Um, and Who's going to do it? I will do it. Say something nice. Uh, <laughs> the Pace Car Program, this isn't sort of the city's second time around with it, is it not? Well, it's never went away. We're just kind of like revive it and push the rock up the hill. So at any rate, the Pace Car Program is, um, is uh, a program where you sort of take a pledge that you'll drive at the speed limit. And um, the idea is if there's cars uh, moving around the city, at the speed limit, then um, other people won't be able to to speed. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you get a triangular sticker that identifies you as a pace car driver. It has a little bit of basic information about that. And um, so, it's just to encourage people to drive the speed limit, keep the city streets safe, um, and be visible. Uh, and I think it's that being visible is important because. One, it explains to people why you're, why you're driving the speed limit. And the other thing, it, it telegraphs to people that it's, it's, a, it's an important safety concern and it's an important, you know, we don't want people racing around the city, um, potentially injuring people. So uh, I've signed up for it. Um, I was signed up for it actually a few years ago, now that I think about it. But I got my sticker at the DPW when I got my dump sticker. So, um, but you can also sign up for it. I think on the city website. You can sign it up for it on the website, but you pick up your sticker. But you pick up your sticker at the DPW anyway. So, but yes. Thank you. Well done. Hooray. Next month it's Deb. <laughs> Thanks for I've got time to prepare. Yes. <laughs> what am I going to say? Okay. Uh, now we're on to public comment. Now, the way public comment works is that we ask people to keep their comments to around three minutes. Uh, that um, that if you're bringing up an a giant a, 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 a item that's not on the agenda, then um, we um, we're, we will not be discussing it here. Uh, there, I think Fred has something that he wants to talk about that's on the agenda. But you're still welcome to speak during public comment. Um, so. Um, if you want to raise your hand, if you would like to speak, raise your hand and Fred, come up and demonstrate how it's done. Uh, your name and... Um, my name? Yeah, your name and your street if you'd like. Uh, my name is Fred Zinnock. I live on Pomeroy Terrace next to uh, Palm Bridge Apartments. Um, the things I'm going to talk to are sort of on the schedule. One, at least one item is on the schedule, the other one is sort of on the schedule. I have voiced this problem before. There's a parking problem on Phillips Street, which is also a safety problem, especially during the winter. I wouldn't be here but for the fact that the DLC is planning to build 23-unit market rate condos on parcel 32A-171, which is zone CB without a parking requirement. Unlike the previous senior housing project for this parcel, the project was also using the existing church parking lot for condo. I'm sorry. The project will also use the existing church parking lot for additional condos. The previous pro project did not. The previous project that was going to be put at St. John and Kennedy's Church was going to use the parking lot as a parking lot. Uh, this will, using that parking lot uh, as a condos, will reduce the available parking space in the area still further, which is really swamped with cars. Parenthetically, I note that since 1989, the city has purchased well over 25% of the city's land mass for tax-free conservation land. Couldn't the city purchase 
the church parking lot for a municipal parking lot, unlike conservation land, it would generate city revenue. I think the parking at the lower end of Phillips Place is a problem because it narrows the road to prevent passage of fire trucks, ambulance, and lost trailer trucks. And I just show a picture of what it looks like in the winter. You pass it around, that's the only picture I have. You can put it in the laser fish file if you want. Does the picture, I think, okay, I got that. My reading of the city ordinances say that when a, parking, when a car is parking, the driver must leave 15 feet of clearance. In that picture, I don't see 15 feet of clearance. So those cars would be subject to a class B fine. Does the picture show a safety problem or a parking violation? With respect to item 6C on your agenda, I shop at the stores on King Street. On return, I travel on Market Street, then across Bridge Street to Holly Street with a left-hand turn on to Phillips Place. With parking on Holly Street at the base of Phillips Place, this is an awkward turn. In order to see oncoming traffic, I need to pull over into the left-hand lane, and then, with cars blocking the right lane, you need to hug the car around Phillips Place to make a turn. I would expect it would be more awkward for an 18-wheel trailer truck. With all the problems on Phillips Place, with all the problems making Phillips Place a suitable truck escape route, I often wonder why Hancock Street wasn't chosen. Thank you, Rick. So were you speaking in favor of the proposal that's here for the removal of parking spaces on the road? Well, certainly, yeah. Okay. I mean, right. it's just... It's, it, it's got to make it easier, but I, I still think Phil Place is very bad for trucks, especially with the parking uh, uh, problem on the lower end of the street. In fact, I asked you, is there a traffic traffic violation there, a parking violation, with so little clearance on the street? According to the city ordinances, if you park your car, you've got to leave 15 feet of clearance. It's certainly not in that picture. So is that a violation? Well, we're not supposed to respond. <laughs> oh. Can I ask a question? No, that's a waste of time. Uh, sure, if it's a quick one, because we're trying to move through. Yeah, I was just curious. All that parking you see on the street there, is that resident parking, or is it people coming to work at the school and stuff? As far as I know, it's people coming to work. Thank you, Fred. Who's that? Thank you, Fred. Um, there is a clarification about that comment that the city could not use CPC money to buy a parking lot. The city could buy a parking lot. That's another issue, but you couldn't use CPC money. Okay. Mary. Okay. Your no. name and where sure. you live. And Let me just set up my quick uh, cue cards here. Hello. Uh, my name is Mary Savarys and I live at 36 Prospect Avenue in Northampton. I've been a resident in the Pioneer Valley since 2003, and I live with my spouse, Jean Zebris. I'm here to talk to you today about the Amtrak parking lot on Pleasant Street in Northampton. Jean and I are both regular rail commuters on the Amtrak Vermont train, and now have begun to use the Valley Flyer as well because of a more convenient schedule. We travel via Amtrak to and from New York City each month for family visits, and regularly scheduled medical treatments. Recently, we noticed large changes to the Northampton station drop-off and pickup areas, so much so that we felt we needed to speak today to you to consider holding the process of changing the city ordinance that will specifically alter that particular lot's control and management. My points of concern are as follows. The city is considering platform bars, private owner control and management responsibilities of that lot thus giving over to a private entity control of a public transportation depot. We're currently in discussion with MassDOT regarding this point. That's the DOT. The lot, the new manager, states, there is only an allowable 15 minutes of free time to drop off and pick up. 
That's new. That 15 minutes is not enough. The trains are notoriously late. Today, the 204 arrived at 2.35. A little side note. In all too many cases, we had to wait longer than a quarter of an hour and even up to two hours for any train. At times, we experienced no train at all, perhaps due to needed maintenance or because a storm just passed through. And last winter, and as early as just a few weeks ago, the train didn't come at all, thus leaving stranded travelers searching for very expensive taxis and very questionable bus service. If you have been there, you have seen this new toll gate a toll gate. It is at the entrance and exit of that lot. It takes only credit cards. And if you have one with you, that's great. But there are, there are some credit cards that such transactions are not acceptable. For my next point, they deemed a no cash lot. They deemed it. The, the private owner. And as you know, cash is allowed in our other park spaces and lots. And lots. Additionally, the new management posted a sign at the toll gate saying that fees may be added, yet they give no explanation of why or what these fees are attached to. The new management, quote, say they offer discounts to their bar patrons only, to their bar patrons. So you must spend money at that bar to get validated stickers? When could they possibly be obtained? Because the train certainly does not fit within that bar's operating time. If the train is at early 6 a.m. and that bar is not open until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. As for mandated parking for the disabled, these spots cannot be accessed without going through a toll gate now. And one has to wonder how much time is allotted for those disabled drivers or riders to stay. Can they stay? Can they just stay remain parked or waiting in those spaces? This is a matter that needs to be brought up to the ADA and the Human Rights Council. The fact that there are no protective wind, rain, snow shelters on that once called temporary slippery wooden platform makes it absolutely imperative for riders and drivers to stay in our cars while we wait and wait for the trains to arrive. Plus, I've been told that there should be charging stations installed to allow users to recharge in order to make needed phone calls for telephone, uh, telephone connections for needed uh, pickups and, and uh, taxis. So you can see that by these few items mentioned, there needs to be further time required to completely analyze the changes that are going to permit a private manager control over our city public lot, which is in this case adjacent to a government transportation service relegated for free public access and usage. My appeal to you today is to hold off any action that will change this code of the parking transportation ordinance. One last point. Okay, my field to you today. Um, you could see by these, just these few items, that there is needed time to further completely analyze the changes. Control over a city lot? My appeal to you is to hold off this action. Do you know that there are more than 20,000 riders that use this Amtrak service? 20,000. Please reconsider how we, our families, and friends and neighbors will be affected by the huge change, huge change to this ordinance. The beauty of this Amtrak rail service is to make Northampton an even more accessible and, of course, more delightful place to live, work, and simply enjoy. The Amtrak train service is growing this city and other places along the lines. So please don't allow Amtrak Valley Rail riders to become collateral damage. We are concerned about keeping the service, but it has to be safe, available, to everyone of all ages and abilities, and we need to be treated better than this. Please hold off the change until there's more certainty and more fairness in this agreement. Keep the conversation going as we want to, always, and thank you for this opportunity. It will only lead to a better resolution. Thank you for your time and for your understanding. Thank you very much. I will send you a copy of this. Send well, me a copy, and I'd points. like to talk. Let's yes. talk on the phone. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Yes, he's, um, my name is Beck Notar. I live on Franklin Street. Thank you for allowing this opportunity for public comment. I didn't know about the Pace Car program. That sounds great, and I'll sign up. 
Um, I was just over there this morning delivering a petition of uh, 30 families so far and counting um, to have um, traffic calming considered at the Franklin Prospect intersection. Um, it, we also support Julie Harvey Park's petition for the um, what Round Hill Prospect. So I'll give you so this. This goes to DPW. Yes, I submitted it. This oh, one. this is a copy. Yeah, it's a copy oh, for okay, you all. Oh, okay, good. All right. Um, and <laughs> I just wanted to like demonstrate. So I don't, since I don't have any good photos yet, I think the problem you were talking about speed. But I think one of the problems at the intersection is that um, you have over here, you have the survival center, the land of Green Spoon day school the synagogue, which also has a preschool. And so people are crossing at Franklin and at Prospect, a lot of kids and elderly people are trying to cross the street. And what happens, well, sometimes cars are not stopping. But sometimes cars stop, and what I think is really dangerous is a car behind coming up the hill, especially in the afternoon, the sunshine, right? Like now, sun is coming up. And drivers can't see very well that there's a crosswalk here or that there are people in the crosswalk. So a car comes behind, this car stops, and you know, people are like, oh, I gotta get home. Da -da 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 -da. You know, we're all in that. And the car will come around and almost hit people in the crosswalk. So that, I think, both um, Julie and I, that's our, our huge concern we've seen many times. We've been the car that stopped and the car is coming around, or we're in the crosswalk, or neighbors are in the crosswalk, kids are in the crosswalk, and the car coming around can't can't see. So we're we're really afraid some somebody's gonna get hit mm -hmm. in one of those crosswalks. So we just ask the city to please consider some way, speed is one thing, but some way so cars can't pass. And it is a passing on the right in outside the lane of travel. Right, so people, yeah, passing in there. So there's a bike lane here. There's enough space so a car can get around. And I think because here, up here, there is um, a, a crosswalk with a crossing guard for the Y. And then up here, there's a four way stop. Oh, you're one before, I realized. Yeah, one before. So cars coming this way, they know, okay, there's a four way stop, there's a crossing guard. But then there's sort of a clear shot and cars kind of gain speed. Or cars coming around from thin up. Prospect, if they're new drivers, they don't necessarily know, or even, you know, we all know we want to get home in a hurry, but it's just, it's a, a dangerous situation. So we're hoping the city can do something so cars can pass. Thank you, that's it. Thank you for sharing nice. the questions. Yeah, there was, I love the Hi, um, I'm Jara Malik and Sir Rice. This is my daughter. I'm Aaron Sirice. Um, we live at High Meadow Road um, in Florence. Um, Can you spell your name for me? Sure, please? it's J-A-R-A, -A, and then the last is M-A-L-I-K-I-N hyphen S is in Sam, I-R-O-I-S. Um, and I'm coming to you today about an issue. I actually emailed my counselors last night and they suggested I come to talk to you today. Um, for those not familiar with where High Meadow is on Florence Road, we're between um, Florence Heights, basically, and the Burt's Pit Florence Road intersection. Um, I'm coming to you today because we live on an extremely dangerous section of Florence Road. Um, it's very narrow, um, it, it's curvy, and there is no um, shoulder or sidewalk, and I'm very concerned um, that I have children that I cannot let safely go anywhere on their own for fear of um, the cars on Florence Road. It's not just a matter of speed. I appreciate I have seen the police. They are doing speed chops um, regularly. Um, so there is, there is the issue of speed, but I feel the police department is doing a good job of trying to address that. Um, but the way the road is designed, it's extremely unsafe. Um, due to the narrowness and the curve of the road. Um, I'm not quite sure what, what folks were thinking back when the road was built. It's an extremely um, dense area. There's lots of houses on Florence Road. There is, there's two streets, there's Brookwood, 
um, and Stone Ridge off of Florence Road, and then you have High Meadow. So there are lots of folks who live on this small section of Florence Road. There's hundreds of folks um, who I feel cannot safely um, walk or bike from our homes due to the unsafe nature of this road. The PBTA now has several, um, there's a route that goes down at this part of Florence Road multiple times a day now. Um, and then yesterday, I saw a UPS semi-trailer truck on the road as well. So you can imagine these really large vehicles on a very narrow, curvy road. And then imagine a child um, who should be allowed to ride her bike at this point to the Lily Library or Florence Fields um, and trying to imagine these vehicles passing her while also dealing with oncoming traffic. I just feel it's an accident waiting to happen. Um, I'm, I'm pretty alarmed that nothing has been done at, um, by now, because I know this has been an issue that's been talked about for many years. Um, but due to now that this road is being used by large vehicles, um, and so many vehicles, it's a commuting road, despite being a residential neighborhood, I'm asking that um, the city look at what can be done to reconfigure this road, as well as add a sidewalk so that residents can feel safe walking on our door and enjoying um, nature and running errands and trying to cut down on using our cars and our carbon footprint um, so that we don't have to drive to a, a store that's less than a mile away. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, I did, like I said, I have emailed the mayor and um, several of the city councilors. I do hope this issue can continue to be talked about and um, something be done. I'm happy to to do whatever I can to keep this um, this issue alive. I mean, there is the sidewalk at um, Florence Heights. It starts right at Florence Heights. Um, but I like to go visit my friends. I like to go on Florence Fields to practice soccer and lacrosse. But unfortunately, I can't do that because my parents don't want me going out with the field of me getting hit by a car. And I mean, I have an older brother. He loves to bike everywhere. My parents feel comfortable with him because he's older than me. But I think that I should be able to go bike on my own to get exercise, have fun, and do what I want, but I can't with oh, my fear and my parents' fear and my family's fear of me getting hit by a car. And what was your name? Marin Torres. That's M A R E N. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And Marin, think about Youth Commission. Yeah. Off the soccer. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak for public comment? Thank you for, Thank you. you're welcome to stick around and hear us talk about the things on the agenda. I don't think we're referenced there, but we do have a meter that's about to expire. Sorry. <laughs> and like I said, I mean, Mary, I, 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 we should talk on the phone. All right. I'll all right. send you the notes. Thank all you right. very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, on to back to the agenda. Uh, we have the approval of the minutes from our September meeting. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion? Oh, to approve the minutes of oh. the September meeting. So we have a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion of the minutes? I just want to say our replacement Beth did a really great job, and we have our regular Beth. <laughs> All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Is and I didn't abstention? say aye. aye, aye. Oh, You're abstaining? Okay. And I had an aye in there, although I didn't say it. All right. Um, uh, reports from departments and subcommittees. Can report, Lizzie PW. Oh, good. For roadway improvement projects, the first pit road is substantially complete. Palmer Paving will be working on site restoration. For Chesterfield Road, Spring Street, Main Street Leeds, and Cross Street, final paving is complete. Palmer Paving will be working on driveways and loaming in the upcoming weeks. And final paving on Glendale Road is complete. Warner Brothers will be working on site restoration for both Glendale Road and Bridge River. And for pavement markings, highway safety systems for the city this week to repaint ski pumps and their road markings. Excellent. Thank you, Meg. Anybody else? Wayne is not is absent today. 
is um, pedestrian bicycle subcommittee meets in the morning. Uh, there's an update from we met last month. There was an update of projects. Um, we talked about signage. I'm sorry, I expected him to report on it, so I don't have any more detail, but um, we'll get our list together for next time. Excellent. Anybody else? Chief? Nothing to report. Okay. Um, I just want to add the walking school bus at Bridge Street School is doing great. That we're getting uh, 10 children on each route, one starting from Sheldon Field, the other starting at the lumber yard. And, um, and we're still looking to recruit some volunteer drivers. So if anybody knows anyone, send them to the Bridge Street School website where they can sign up. Um, yes, Nancy. Um, do do we have any kind of an ETA on the moving of the bus stop from Bridge Street School area up to across from the post office? I know that that passed, mm -hmm. um, but as far as the logistics behind physically moving that spot, do you know any updates? Um, Maggie, do yeah. you know what's going on with it, or? I don't have an ETA on that. Thank you. Okay. Any other? I did one that I wish I'd put with bike pad. Um, we had a bicyclist sit in the crosswalk on Main Street on Friday. I assume that Wayne or somebody might sort of get the details of that and see if it gives anything to inform us about how they understood that their role in relation to the traffic. I, don't, I, don't have, I just saw it. I don't know anything about the details or if it. If there's anything there for that subcommittee to talk about with the use of the city bikes, the driver failed to the bicyclist failed to dismount the bike across the crosswalk, so the bicyclist was issued a citation. Thank you. So it was the bicyclist who was not behaving like a pedestrian in a crosswalk. Correct. Yeah. Thank you for the update. And which crosswalk was this place? Right at Viva. Okay. All right, um, now to the matters before the commission. Uh, item A, discussion of 19.36 in ordinance to amend chapter 312, vehicles and traffic, to amend definitions of parking, meter, and parking violation. Um, how's their share is pulling it up here? Okay. Let's see, does that look like? Um, so, um, what is, who would, uh, Maggie, would you like to describe what's going on here or who, this is, came from the mayor's office, right? Yes. Yeah, I can give it, I guess, an overview. Um, so what we're looking at is that we're adding language that um, allows us to um, enforce parking based on using smartphone apps and the mobile payment systems. So um, uh, the, the current uh, language has us de dealing with the traditional parking meters. So we're adding this so that I guess we can go to court and stand up and get <laughs> the, uh, the fees. Um, so um, I'm going to read this first paragraph in here. Uh, the parking of a vehicle in a parking meter space when the meter registers violation either as a result of e expiration of time or failure to insert money, we're adding in, in the case of a meter, smartphone app, or mobile payment system utilizing pay-by-plate technology, failure to enter the proper license plate number shall be a meter violation. And I imagine Nancy's heard this complaint a few times. Um, so, uh, I'll just keep reading here. Um, any mechanical, electronic, or uh, we're describing a parking meter, any mechanical, electronic, or electronic mechanical device, or smartphone app, or mobile uh, payment system, that little portion was new, not inconsistent with the provision of this regulation in place or erected, new part, or electronically available, 
old part, on any public way or municipal off-street parking area within the city for the regulation of parking. In the case of a parking meter head type device, said device shall indicate by proper legend the legal parking time established by this regulation and when operated shall at all times indicate the balance of legal parking time permitted and in the expiration of such period shall at all times indicate illegal or meter violation parking. New part. In the case of a meter utilizing pay-by-plate technology, comma, when a oh, par parking, oh, parking and then new receipt is dispensed or other notice transmitted said receipt or notice back to the old language shall indicate the date and time of expiration in area in which add an electronic pay for parking device uh, back to the old language is located shall have appropriate posted notice or signage to indicate the legal parking time established by this regulation and then struck is in an area where a parking pass dispensing device is in use a purchased parking pass must be conspicuously displayed on or in the area of the vehicle's driver's side dashboard so as to be both readily visible and readable do i have a motion to put this on the floor so second did i do that right i did right. Dang. All, right. <laughs> All right, um, any discussion about this? Would somebody like to make a recommendation for sending this forward to council? I'll recommend it. Positive. Actually did that Positive. That's what the motion was. Oh, okay. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, so with no further discussion, all right, I'm gonna close discussion. Um, all in favor of sending this forward to council with a positive recommendation, say aye. 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 Um, anyone opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, that is done. Next. Um, This is order 19.137, an ordinance to amend chapter 312, vehicles in traffic. Um, an ordinance, let's say, it has to do with providing for on-street and off-street handicapped handicap parking spaces. And what is, uh, we're being asked to consider is deleting a parking space which is on Pleasant Street, and um, it's based on, I, based on what I see here, it's the handicapped parking space on the westerly side of Pleasant Street. Is that right, Maggie? I'm not sure what it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so this didn't come from. This didn't come from, so this came from the mayor's office, I guess. Okay. Um, so, this is interesting. Was there? There's no map with it, but um, so this is pleasant off the place in the bottom. Yeah, it's where they put that new raised crosswalk and everything. Right. So it's probably to correct the ordinance for that new construction, I guess. Well. <clears throat> So, uh, would this be in the Union Station lot? No, I think this is well, what they're referring to is the space that's on Pleasant Street off Gleason. Is this is a parking space on the westerly most side of the most end of the parking lot. Oh, it's in the parking lot. Right there. Oh, so this has to do. Oh, yeah, that's the east side. Northern East Side. So, Gleason Plaza is. Oh, yeah, that's the east side. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the right now so I'm the on the I thought it was the on street parking. I thought it was on so it's it's referring first parking space on the westerly most side of the most northerly end of the parking lot east of the first entrance off of Gleason Plaza. So I think this is referring to a handicapped parking space within the um, Union Station parking lot, which has undergone a change in the way it's managed. I don't think we can make any decision until we know what space we're talking about and why we're looking to get rid of it. Thank you for saying that, Chief. <laughs> so um, why don't um, I'm going to table this until next time, and um, we will um, uh, get somebody to come and speak to this. So we'll move to continue. Okay, I move to continue. Once the second. Do we have to vote on it? Okay. We've got a motion. A motion second. to continue. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any nays? Okay. Uh, okay. This one I am familiar with. Uh, this has to do with um, a um, some parking spaces on Phillips Place, and we actually talked about this about oh a little over a year ago. The the problem with uh, tractor trailers as they're using the escape route on Phillips, that as they reach the uh, easterly part of Phillips to take a left onto Pomeroy Terrace, that there's sometimes cars parked legally on the right hand side of the street the southerly side of the street and the trucks can't completely get over into the right turn lane so when the trailer goes through onto pomeroy it, it goes across the crosswalk and will um, damage the utility pole so this by a, broadening this no parking zone it allows trailers tractor trailers to properly queue up so they can make the turn without rolling up on the sidewalk. So Mr. Zemnot brought us said picture of utility pole and truck several years ago. Mm -hmm. Would removing this parking place solve that problem? This, uh, my this was a snow, it was also snow. It was not just a vehicle. But that's different than the picture you brought today, which is of the other It is, of the it, it right? is different, but I just, okay. just to I, clarify, I, I, that I, I thought we were going to get to see that one. I had yeah. remembered it. It's also just a tight corner, I think. So, yeah. so I guess our question is not. Yeah, it's where a car saw it. Yeah. I'm not sure, uh, given snow storage. I have a photo I could pull up and pass around. It you might take a minute. My question. I'm not to be convinced. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that this will solve it. Okay. The, That's all I want to know. That it um, for uh, typical, you know, for cars, there's no problem. And uh, <coughs> it was actually I was sent a photo by somebody who lives on uh, Phillips out their apartment window, and it's clear you can see the truck queued up. It's right in the middle of the street rather than over to the right, and. The next photo is, as it's going through the intersection, you can see, like, oh, that's why they're rolling up on the sidewalk. Just looking at the map they provided, it would definitely help the turning radius for, for trucks. It's pretty clear just looking at it. Thank you. I can also add that I've emailed my constituents within that area, and there's been um, mostly support. There has been, as Fred said, you know, I don't understand how this is going to help with the parking, and I think he's right. Um, they would like me to say there continues to be a parking problem on Phillips Place, uh, but that um, there was a number of people who spoke to saying that they support this going forward. So, right. somebody like to make a motion? So moved. Second. Um, all in, any more discussion? All in favor of moving this forward with a positive recommendation to council, say aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. On to the next thing. Uh, 
right. I'm going to ask Ms. Chan to help out with this one. <laughs> So this is on Walnut Street. The property is actually on Market Street, but their driveway is also Walnut. And they had sent in a parking request to remove parking between their driveway and their neighbor's driveway. I had gone out to measure it, and it was 13 feet from driveway to driveway. And if you can't park within three feet, that only leaves seven feet of space for a car, and that's clearly not enough. And they have called Nancy your office many times to ticket cars that have parked there. So yep. This ordinance would put a no parking zone on either side of the two driveways. And would a sign go in as well or there would be signs. Yes. Sign. Okay. And it would take more than just a sign between the two? I get it between the two, that makes sense, but when you say us on both sides of their yeah, driveway. So that we'd leave you know, five feet of space on either side as well, so people can't park too close on the other side of the driveway. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So the signs go at the ends of the red lines, I'm just saying, nothing yeah. in the middle? Yeah. yeah. So you now you've measured this, does it make sense to you? That that, yeah. that request makes yeah. perfect it sense makes sense. you can't put a car there. I'm moving Don't have space. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Any more discussions? Yeah. Well, I, I just want to add, because this is also in Ward 3, I've had a bunch of emails and phone calls around this, and I want to thank DPW for so quickly pulling this together and um yeah the space it's it's funny like it it's really tempting to people they think <laughs> oh my car fits there and their car kind of fits there if you have a smaller car but it actually it's you know you, they never have the required three feet on either side so they're parking illegally so and it's possible that a motorcycle could have been don't designate a parking place as a motorcycle mm -hmm. in that situation i would Adam, you have anything to say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it could be motorcycle only parking, and then if, if motorcycles park there, then they're not parked someplace else. So, in a way, it's it's like it, it potentially increases the parking stock for. Yeah, or. In, in a space like that, if they park, is it tail end? that congested in that neighborhood though? Like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's Walnut Street. That's prime yeah, okay. downtown, you know. Can, I mean, you, uh, can you make, this is a question about okay, that sure. to Maggie. Can you make a parking place motorcycle only there? Is it legal there for seven feet and you could mark it at seven feet or is there is a motorcycle only a larger space than i'm envisioning i'm not sure the regulations do we have no i don't okay. think so this would be it. our one and only right, <laughs> right. I, I i just think you in this is that sort the of mac up for motorcycles <laughs> right i mean this is a i i don't remember i don't know if you remember but many years ago there was um uh, a protest where there, when BART's used to be in place, yeah. that um, you couldn't park more than one motorcycle per space. And so what the motorcyclists did was they went and they parked the motorcycle in every single space so that there was no parking anywhere in town for pretty much the entirety of Main Street. And it just sort of demonstrated, but I think that there's a lot of spaces in the city that um, where you have uh, Sort of if each parking space is 15 feet long, or how, how big is parking space? Standard parking space? The 15 width. feet long? But 18. 18. 18 feet long? So if you were to multiply 18 out and you wind up with some dead space at the end, that that could be motorcycle parking space. And I don't know what a parking space is worth to the city, but if you can make those free motorcycle parking, then you can essentially increase the city's stock of parking space for 
the cost of a can of paint. So I don't know. It's um, I can see that. I ride a bike, so I understand. Yeah. You know, because we park two, three to a, a spot. Right. So I, I definitely understand. So there's spaces where if you have a if you have a run of parking, like five. Five 18 foot spaces, I believe, would be 90, 90 feet long. And the area that's appropriate for, for parking, say, is uh, 102 feet long. So essentially, you could have a 12 foot motorcycle only parking space, and you could park a bunch of motorcycles in there, which then would not be taking up space someplace else. And I just, I think for a city that has, I was on the parking subcommittee. Um, when there was such a thing of this of this group, and um, I, I really I've looked a great deal at the congestion and the sort of nature of it when it happens, um, and I think that down the road this is something I'd like to see on the agenda. Um, but as far as as far as doing this for this one particular space, you know, I'm not necessarily sure that it makes sense. But conceptually, that idea um, makes sense to me in making more spaces available uh, for for nothing. It's 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 kind of like you could build a five car parking garage for free. Or something like that. Yeah, no, I actually think there's merit to that because the whole electric um, moped and scooter craze is coming. You know, we're going to see a lot more clutter on the street from this stuff, and it will be another purpose for spaces like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, just in general, also people are sort of more interested in scooters as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. Electric or not. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Can... So I think this is an interesting discussion and should be its own agenda item at some point. Um, but not, it's not what this ordinance is about, which is about taking this what's a parking space right. away. So we need to vote on what's actually the ordinance. Um, and then if this is something we want to revisit at another time, I think that would be a, definitely worthwhile. But um, we need to limit to what's uh, actually on the agenda. I think I'm in favor of this particular action aside from any other discussion. Is that weird? Uh, it's all gone exactly what I think. We, we need to have a discussion that's more than on the fly motorcycle parking. We do need to approve this. And the worst that happens is Maggie changes the sign on the pole eventually, and I could hope for that. We might get that back, but for the moment, it would just have the no parking sign. And if it turned into something in the future, it would be a while and we would work out the policy. So I agree. I move we approve. Hmm? And can I move? Please? Yes, go ahead. Any I'll second. Have a second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor of sending this forward to council with a positive recommendation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, next on the agenda is new business. And I, um, I think this would be a great discussion, not for today, but putting the motorcycle parking discussion on our next month's agenda. And Adam, if you want to, you know, talk to me about ways you want to make that presentation or have that conversation go, I'd be happy to talk okay, to you. I'll talk to you about it. I may need, um, depending on the nature of the presentation, I may want two months, uh, but. I'll have a discussion with you between now and next meeting. Okay, great. Okay. And um, is there anything else people would like to have on the agenda for next one? Uh, I have one just question. Don't bring this, this will be pretty short. Um, does we have a no idling statute in the city company? That you can't just sit in a running car? For school zones. I don't know if we have one just for plain old idling. I'd have to check. Okay. It was my curiosity question. I'll try to do my own research on that. Um, the buses that are coming to the academy sit there, two full-size commercial buses sit there for a long time during most weekend days. And sometimes they have their bus running, sometimes they have an alternate generator running. 
but those are going hours at a time right in the center of town. I, it's the one I noticed. I'm sure there are other cases. I just wondered if we did. Those are um, those are carbon fuel type vehicles, or are they propane? They're uh, are they diesel. <laughs> they're they're, uh, they're exhausted buses. But that's why I say you're right. They can't have the alternate. You know, it's right. but the sound is loud enough. I don't believe it's the pro propane. Um, you know, that can be running air conditioner or running a heater. But, um, I'm just curious. Thank you. So I said. <laughs> Anything else for next month's agenda? Okay. Um, anything else under new business? Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.